Have you ever been on a hiking trip and you've come to a fork in the road and you've got to decide, should I go this way or should I go that way? Well, most of the time we decide to go the smoother route. I mean, that is the way most people go. It's got to be the right way. Well, that may be good logic for your hiking journey, but what about your Christian journey? But Jesus has a different way of navigating through life. In Matthew, he said, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is a path and broad is a road that leads to destruction and many find it. But small is the gate and narrow the path that leads to life and only few find it. You see what Jesus was telling us is that most people do take the wrong route because it looks smoother and it looks easier, but it doesn't take them where they want to go. So how do we know the right way? What is the right way? Well, scripture defines the right way as truth. And Jesus tells us in John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, did you notice what Jesus did? He just used three terms all having the same meaning, the way, the truth, and the life. They're all only found in him. So if we believe in scripture, if we believe in Jesus, he tells us the right way. What's our problem? Why do we find this so difficult? problem is simple. We want our own way. We don't want other people to tell us what to do. It sounds very childish, doesn't it? It is, and it's something that we never seem to outgrow. Very early in childhood, we start wanting to make decisions for ourselves, just like the very first man who chose to reject what God said and decided for himself. You see, God had told Adam and Eve what to do, what not to do, and he described the awful consequence of their disobedience, but sadly, they chose to listen to the serpent rather than their creator, and they fell off the road that leads to life. Ever since then, mankind has decided for himself what to do or what not to do, what is right and what is wrong. When we start trusting in our own reasoning, we start to stray off the path. When we insist on deciding truth based upon our own reason or what seems right to us, we confidently say, I know I'm right, I'm a logical person, I'm intelligent, I've done my homework. Unfortunately, one of the greatest flaws of human beings is the inability to use reason and logic to find truth. I mean, think about it. If we had this ability, wouldn't we all arrive on the same path? In Proverbs, we're reminded, there is a path that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to death. We can be so easily deceived by other people and even ourselves when truth doesn't match what we actually want. So how can we avoid this? We've identified the problem. We know the answers. Why is it so hard for us to put this into practice? There's an old hymn that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and all the things of this earth will go strangely dim in light of his glory and grace. And I believe that that scripture is backed up in Matthew, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. I believe that verse is telling us that instead of us focusing on our needs, our problems, our wants, focus instead fully on Jesus, his sacrifice, his love for us, his word. You see, it's hard for us to give up control, and quite frankly, we want that smoother path. Christ is simply asking us to trust in him and let him lead us. That's why the path is so narrow. Most of us choose not to give up that control. He's not asking us to navigate into uncharted territory. I mean, after all, he's been there, he has the way. We just have to choose to follow him. Hey, if it were easy, the path wouldn't be narrow, but it is time for us to trust in Christ and to let him lead us. He does know the way, he is the way. So come on. Let's follow Jesus. So many of you may be saying, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Wide path, narrow path, I know the scripture, but what does that have to do with me and my life? Well, that's a good question, and it shouldn't be taken as a feel-good scripture because it's just not. It requires something of you and me. It requires faith, and more importantly, it requires obedience. So here's what it looks like in your life. 
Your friends are smoking pot. It looks innocent enough. Wide path. You choose not to? Narrow path. The world tells you that sexual activity is not only normal, it's expected of you. And hey, if you don't participate, we're going to call you gay. Wide path. You choose to be made fun of? Narrow path. Your parents tell you that a particular friend may not be in your best interests. You choose to ignore their advice? Wide path. Or you could choose to listen to their advice. Narrow path. You see, it all comes down to one thing, your choices. Your choices make up your life. Decide where you want to go in life. And remember, it's not always going to be easy. It's gonna be rough sometimes, a lot of the times. But you can do this. Choose the right path, choose a narrow path. God bless.